this. Yeah. But see, I'm not going to cut my throat. No, I don't want to cut my That's right here. Yeah. So see, when we cut them out here in June, then a couple of months later, now, I guess you got an extra agenda for me to live on that way or do it. So I can, so I can mark them off. That will be I'm a whole political dog. You've been doing all right. I'm good. You got to get up early in the morning to get me. So I have to really see through the things. Well, I'm this is the final. I understand that. I always remember. Remember what I always say. I'm, I married this baby called Springfield. And I'm not going to have nothing to undermine it. So if, if I see some flexibility where we might benefit from it, yeah. We don't just where, we, where we would have. At least 150 people from Springfield working there, you know. That's, that's my. We gotta get them out of here. But that's my mindset. Right there. This is a good one. I don't want it to go out to the old Cheatham County. That we all factor. They're worried about finding enough workers. Huh? They're worried about finding enough workers. The problem here, the problem here when we got all the rest of the factors is the problem here we have to import. We have to import. Yes. But if it's a quality job that's paying something like fifteen dollars an hour to start off, okay, that's why I want my people to shoot to. Yeah. I'll go eleven dollar an hour and twelve dollar an hour and stuff. I wouldn't check on them. What's that happening now? That's not gonna pay the bills. It costs to rent a shack around there about seven hundred dollars a month. Just to rent a shack, it costs about seven hundred dollars a month. I'm sure. Yeah. Five to seven. So, so, so what, what do they do with 8 dollars You can't. There's no way. And then we're trying to get our kids who don't want to go to college. So we want to get them to stay home. So if they've a good job, they're paying some good bucks. They can stay home. There's a lot of things you got to look at. Yeah. 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 And air tech. Air tech. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. Electric left is still yeah. short about 100 and 150. Yeah. So, so our people still got this. At least they're going to swear. We should be okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> This regular meeting of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for January 19th, 2016 will come to order. I'll ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 The first item on our agenda is the administration of the oath of office to new police officers. And I believe our city recorder, Lisa Crockett, is going to conduct that part of our agenda, assisted by our police chief, David Thompson. And we're proud to see two new officers amen. coming aboard. And I'll say amen to that as well. Special. One of Springfield's finest candidates is one of those officers. I'm very happy to see that. Very grown. Lisa, for the purpose of the television audience, if you get close enough to that microphone to be heard, good. We'll be there. Okay, we Having been appointed, having been appointed as a police officer for the city of Springfield, Tennessee, as a police officer for the city of Springfield, Tennessee, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the state of Tennessee, and the state of Tennessee, and the charter and ordinances, and the charter and ordinances 
of the city of Springfield. Of the city of Springfield. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. To which I have been appointed. To which I have been appointed. To the best of my skill and ability. To the best of my skill and ability. So help me God. So help me God. On my honor. On my honor. I will never betray my badge. I will never betray my badge. My integrity. My integrity. My character. My character. Or the public trust. Or the public trust. I will always have the courage to to hold myself. I always have the courage to hold myself. And others accountable for our actions. And others accountable for my actions. I will always uphold the Constitution. I will always uphold the Constitution. My community. My community. And the agency I serve. And the agency I serve. Give you a little bit of background on both these individuals. Uh, Chelsea uh, comes to us. She's from here in Springfield. Uh, she played lots of sports in high school. She's still somewhat of a legend around here for that. Uh, she went to college, Milligan, Milligan College on scholarship. Still holds some records there, I understand, as far as track and field. But more importantly, a four-year degree in psychology. Uh, we got her from the clerk's office. We're very excited to have her working for us. Amen. Uh, Stephen Wassman. Uh, Stephen went to school in Texas. He went to uh, did some college in Texas before joining the U.S. Army. Uh, he went to the MP school there. In addition, he became a squad leader. He moved up in rank and that sort of thing. He has a variety of, of ribbons, including Afghan, Afghanistan, including uh, you know global war on terrorism and uh, a variety of others. But we're very excited to have both of them on board. I think both of them have a world of possibilities and uh, yeah, we'll be good for our community. I just want to say we're extremely pr proud of our police department and the officers that we have had. And we look so much, so forward to uh, your being with us and making this a career. It's great to see you and great to see the commitment that you have to this extremely important part of, of our, our our city government, the first the first the most important duty of the of the country and the, the state and our local government is public safety, and that's what it's all about. We call it defense on the national level. We call it public safety here. We appreciate your commitment to this and look forward to supporting you as you go forward. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Maybe shake your hands, Chief. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Second <laughs> airborne. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is the cooperative outreach for personal emergencies and we come asking for your help. Here's the good news. I'm not going to ask you for money. I'm sure there are plenty that come for that. We're okay with money. We're doing fine there. What I'm asking for is for people. We at COPE are in desperate need of volunteers and I ask for you to let that happen. Uh, quickly, I would like to tell you why you should care. Last year, COPE uh, paid something in the vicinity of $84,000 to companies and institutions like CEMC, Springfield Utilities, and Springfield Housing Authority in the name of people who couldn't pay their bills. Through our thrift store, through private donations, through the fantastic help of United Way, we paid those bills for those folks and in the process helped somewhere in the vicinity of 600 people in Springfield and Robertson County to keep lights on, to keep heat available on nights like these, to keep the air conditioning running, water on, roofs over their head. Last year we paid $84,000 to help the poor out in this county. One single mother uh, was holding two jobs. She was also going to school full time. Uh, but she couldn't turn her air conditioner on unless it went over 95 degrees because she couldn't pay the bills. When she came to us, we gladly helped. We had a retired couple not too long ago who their transmission went out and they had to make a choice between paying for a transmission or paying an electric bill. We were glad to help them out. We hear stories like these on and on. There was a gentleman recently uh, who was in between jobs. He had a new job coming when he came to us, but there was that gap and he needed our help. He now brings resources back to us because we said yes when he came. Our ability to support this community as we have though is waning. We are struggling with volunteers and by the way we are completely volunteers but we have uh, a need for people. We've got to have more people who help us in the store and in the back room and doing that sort of stuff and we're not going to be able to get pie without it. Originally churches ran cope but churches change and leaderships change and priorities change and regrettably we don't have that avenue as we did to bring in constant new flow of volunteers so now we're hurting and simply put our mission is in jeopardy I ask you to hear that again our mission at COPE is in jeopardy I know the poor of Springfield don't want that I know that you don't want that because you all know the problems that come uh, if uh, something like COPE disappears from the community and we at COPE sure don't want that because we know the good that's being done I know writing a check in our culture is the easiest way to help, but that won't cut it anymore. We need people. So this is where my plea to you comes in. We need your contacts. We need your leadership. We need your ideas. We need you to introduce us to folks who might want to get something done in God's kingdom or just do humanity's work. We need you to urge people to volunteer their time and talents to cope. We need people to uh, care for other people, and we need you to get us in touch with those folks because you all are the leaders in the community, you all are representatives, and you have those contacts. So we need people to unpack boxes, to conduct interviews, to talk with shoppers, to run the register. If there is an organization, an individual, or a company that I can, I can call, talk to, please call me up. If you want to help, give me a call. I'm asking these things because we need them in a serious way, and the poor in this county need you all in a serious way. In closing, I'm a Christian pastor, so I'll give you my Christian plea. I know Jesus' way is not the only way of thinking, but it's my perspective, so I ask that you indulge me. Jesus was asked about the essence of the faith. Someone asked him, what is the greatest law? What is the core of the faith is what they asked. And Jesus replied using two Jewish laws, one from Leviticus and one from Deuteronomy. It's very simple. He said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and love your neighbor just as much as you love yourself. Those two things are all you've got to worry about, Jesus said, and if you do that, everything else will fall into place. I'm asking you individually, and I'm asking you as a legislative body to help love our neighbors by helping us find volunteers. We have to have them, and we have to have them soon. And when God provides them through you, we'll thank you and give all the glory. I have uh, time for a few questions if you, if you do, and I also have a few brochures that I would like to pass to you all if that would be okay. Stein. Are there any questions from the members of the board? We appreciate what you all do. I'm fully aware of, of this organization. My late mother was a volunteer there for many years. It's wonderful. And I understand it, and I know that uh, it is easier to write the check sometimes than it is to go forward and spend a little time down there. And uh, I hope that through this means, the people that are here tonight who hear your plea, and also the fact that this the video of this of this meeting will be on our uh, channel three many many times for the next month <laughs> yes, so you will be heard at six 
6 a.m., 12 noon, 8 p.m., four days a week, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or something like that. Is that the way that is? No, no, that I'd have been much more nervous. Sir. All right. <laughs> now, see, aren't you glad I didn't tell right. you to start with? All right, but that will be heard there. We Thank you all very much. We appreciate what you do as a leader. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'll be remiss. And just a, no, it's not about you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. But just to kind of piggyback. I'm on the board of directors for the mid Community Action Agency, and we have $375,000 set aside for light bills. So we open Monday. And the way the weather is going right now. Yes, sir. Right over here behind the center. Those meters are spinning. Yes, sir. And Robert Gardner's happy because he's selling electricity, and Greg's happy because he's selling gas, too. But uh, somebody's <laughs> got to pay for that. We'll pay for gas, too. All right. Thank you, well, Thank you sir. Okay. We now have public hearings for a public hearing in regard to a no parking zone which is being proposed on the following streets. Uh, first, uh, the south side of 15th Avenue West between John L. Patterson and South Main. And the other is uh, part B of this proposal is the west side of Bessie Street between 15th Avenue West and 17th Avenue West. Is there anyone who wishes to make a statement publicly uh, in this regard? Hearing none, we'll conclude the public hearing. We are re now ready for the approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was held on December 15th of last year. Is there a motion that these minutes be approved? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mayor. Is, discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, item 3.6 of the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, had to do with the welcome sign. Yes. It states here that the welcome sign will be a two sided V shaped with columns. The diagrams that we got was not a V shape, it was one with one column. It's changed. The, uh, not that I'm aware that it's been changed. It was nothing mentioned in the last meeting about being V-shaped or, or having columns, plural, that had one column uh, in, Gina, flat, in a flat sign. Gina, head or Heber with the uh, codes department. Gina, this is in your area. If you would enlighten us on that. If there's well, what I do remember is it was going to be two-sided. I can't, I don't have the, the sketch in front of me or anything. I mean, you all, I think they passed it out to you all. Mm -hmm. But um, I remembered that it was going to be two-sided. I think when they say V-shaped, I think it's going to be sort of like this, that, so it can be seen from each side, like from uh, Memorial Boulevard and Tom Austin. If that was well, the idea that well, I that, that may be the idea <laughs> as it's written in the minutes, but that's not the idea that it was presented before. It was a flat sign. And had one column. I heard it referred to though as V-shaped. Well, <laughs> I wrote that and I wrote the minutes. And overhead, it is a V-shaped sign because you have to get the angle. Well, that's not V-shaped towards, towards the roadway. That's not what presented us in the, in the brochure. Well, that's what's been presented to the city. And it was in the brochure. I saw everything that went into the packet. It was a V-shape. Well. I mean, our minutes should reflect what we talked about at the last minute, not how it was adjusted after they turned it's it in. It's not. It's a V-shape. It is a V-shape. Send that down. Anybody else want to comment on this? Now, what they did is they came back and said they would have a different dimension to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, that's, but they weren't changing the basic design of it. The idea was to be seen from both 431 and 41, and you couldn't very well do that with, a, with it being together like that. You would have to do it at an angle like that. I kept that specifically because I felt that might okay. come up tonight. All right. Is there a motion then that the, we have the motion and we have the second. Is there any further discussion on the minutes? If you favor the approval of minutes, please say aye. 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 If you oppose, vote no. All right, we move now to the legislative portion of the agenda. Item 2.1 is, is in regard to Ordinance 15-24. This is a third reading, which means it's the final reading. It's the third time that we've discussed this matter. 
This would rezone approximately 1.79 acres of property located on Robertson County Tax Map 91-E, uh, Group A, Parcel 8, fronting Memorial Boulevard from CG, G Commercial General District, to CS, Commercial Services District. The uh, reason for this, as I understand from planning and zoning, is to uh, for a proposal for a a hotel which would be located on that property between Cunningham Motors and uh, Kroger, the Dairy Queen in that area. Uh, this would be as proposed as proposed as a Holiday Inn Express. Is that right? Yes, sir. So that's what we're uh, considering on third and final reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion you're, tonight on this issue? You're correct. The Holiday Express. Okay. okay. Is, is what any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask our city clerk to call the roll. Snyder? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Greg? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Charter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Pest 6 Zero. All right, 2.2 is a first reading on Ordinance 16-01. This uh, would amend the schedule of fees and charges for play at the Legacy Golf Course by rescinding Ordinance 15-02 in its entirety and substituting a new schedule of fees attached to the two as Exhibit A. Being a first reading, it is re our rules require that it be read uh, in its entirety by our city clerk. That will be done so at this time. Ordinance 16-01, an ordinance amending the schedule of fees and charges for play at the Legacy Golf Course by rescinding Ordinance 15-02 in its entirety and substituting a new schedule of fees attached hereto as Exhibit A. Whereas Article 4, Section 13 of the Charter of the, Springfield, of the City of Springfield requires that the fixing of fees and charges be accomplished the legislative action which must be exercised by ordinance and whereas a schedule of fees and charges for play at the legacy golf course was approved by the board of mayor and aldermen through adoption of ordinance 15-02 and whereas the board of mayor and aldermen desires to amend the schedule of fees for the legacy golf course at the recommendation of cornerstone golf, golf partners inc now therefore it be it ordained by the board of mayor and aldermen of springfield tennessee as follows section one the schedule of fees for play at the Legacy Golf Course is hereby amended by rescinding Ordinance 15-02 in its entirety and substituting a new schedule of fees to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, this ordinance and the schedule of fees for the Legacy Golf Course as set forth in Exhibit A attached shall become effective immediately upon final passage. Section 3, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict here within are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. Now that that has been read by Stephanie Peterson, our city clerk, is there a motion that this be considered? So moved. Second. All right. Paul? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Mayor, this uh, proposed ordinance keeps fees uh, currently in existence from last year. There is one change, page three, entitled Note on Golf Fees, Special Fees, has another paragraph added and this is demand-based pricing and Chet Frazier in his cover memorandum explained that deals with uh, people being able to make tea times on smartphones and, and other things and using uh, certain companies to do that and that will allow us to increase rates based on uh, high demand or decrease rates based on low demand and of course that has to be included in any ordinance to be allowed to uh, to be set that way so uh, the the third paragraph uh, the par second paragraph on page three reads demand based pricing the golf course management company shall be authorized to implement online demand based pricing to maximize tee time utilization and revenues demand based pricing will utilize software to adjust pricing based on times of high low demand within established parameters and those parameters were explained by Chet in his memo the ceiling for demand-based pricing shall not exceed 15% above the established rate during periods of high demand, nor shall the floor exceed 25% below the established rate during the periods of low demand. And uh, Chet is here to answer any questions you may have. Chet, we welcome you. Is there anything you want to say to start with? Um, no, we, we feel like with the year we had last year that the rates need to stay the same. This demand-based pricing is a 
it's a new option for us. It's a software-based program that scans our T-sheet, tracks utilization rates, and can make adjustments based on parameters we set to add incentives for players to come out in times of slow demand and to offset those discounts during times of high demand if the rates would slightly increase. Okay. Bobby? Is that like when you make a tee time on golfnow.com or something like that? that this, <coughs> this would be uh, sp specifically through our website. It, it is it's in partnership with Golf Demand, or um, I'm sorry, with Golf Now. It's their software program that's that we're utilizing. That's um, so yes, it's online tee times, and as you see, Golf Demand's prices fluctuate. It would be very similar to that. Other questions? Yes, I uh, I want to comment on your being thorough with the high schools, and I I really feel this is very fair. Uh, the rates yes, and, you, and the the rules going to govern their use of the golf course. So. Thank you, sir. And that is the same same program as we've had in place the previous two years. Okay. okay. Jeff, come in. You're doing a great job. The course is beautiful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Clay? Good job. Heard a lot. Heard about the uh, looking much better than it had been, been last year. Same here. That. Here, same thing. I like that. You didn't know you were going to come and get some praise tonight. We're <laughs> not complaining we'll about take something, it. are we? <laughs> we will take it. All right. <laughs> Thank Let's you for the good job that you're doing. Let's rump that Raymond Floyd. Yeah. Then you can get some tournaments yeah, out, okay? I was kind of concerned about the prices. I had some uh, friends come out of Nashville and play, and they loved it. <laughs> so, so good job. I think it we're all great. right by comparison. It okay. looks great. All right. We, do we have a motion on this? Mm -hmm. All right. The second. Any further discussion now? Call the roll, please. Hubbard. Aye. Snead. Aye. Carnell. Aye. Charter. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Greg. Aye. Past six zero. All right. Our next item, 2.3, is also a first reading, and I'll ask uh, Stephanie to uh, read that for us, please. Ordinance 16-02, an ordinance amending Title Eight of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Alcoholic Beverages by amending Chapter 2 entitled Beer by rescinding Section 8-208 entitled Permit required for engaging in beer business in its entirety and substituting a new section 8-208 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas the City of Springfield Beer Board at the December 10, 2015 meeting voted to recommend to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen that the City of Springfield Municipal Code be amended to reflect the newly enacted public act requiring a beer permit applicant to be a citizen or lawful resident of the United States for not less than one year immediately preceding the date upon which the application for a beer permit is made. Now, therefore, it be ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee, as follows. Section 1, Title 8 of the Springfield Municipal Code is hereby amended by amending Chapter 2, entitled Beer, by rescinding Section 8-208, entitled Permit, required for engaging in beer business, in its entirety and substituting a new section 8-208 entitled <coughs> permit required for engaging in beer business to read as set forth in exhibit a attached section 2 all ordinances resolutions and policies in conflict here within are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only thank you ma'am is there a motion so moved in a second Se uh, second all right any discussion now mr mira Unfortunately, I cannot find anyone in my ward to replace the gentleman that resigned. Mm -hmm. So until I find someone, I will have to sort of fill in if there's a call meeting or something. Okay. All right. Any other comment, though, pertaining to this particular ordinance? This will be considered uh, uh, two other occasions besides tonight, in addition to, not, to tonight. So it's not final until the third reading. Hearing nothing further, I'll ask the roll be called. Mayor Cornell? Aye. Charter? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Greg? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Passing zero. 2.4 is a resolution. This is only requiring action one time, and that'll be tonight. This resolution would declare certain property as surplus and authorize the disposal of such property. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask the roll to be called. Charter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Cornell? Aye. That's six zero. And now at the top of your next page, 2.5, is resolution uh, 02. 
this would authorize the issuance of not to exceed six million one hundred fifty five thousand dollars in aggregate principal amount of general obligation public improvement bonds for the city of springfield do i hear a motion so moved do i hear a second second comment paul mayor uh, ashley uh, mcnulty with stevens is here All right. if you have any questions mr mcnulty if you will come forward <clears throat> Ashley, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor, Alderman, staff, citizens of Springfield. It's a pleasure to meet with you tonight to discuss the bond issue that's being proposed for six million one hundred fifty-five thousand. The uh, first resolution is the initial resolution, which will be published in a local newspaper. Twenty days later, the city would be in a position to issue the bonds at a competitive bid, public bond sale. And so this uh, will take care of a number of the projects that you all have on your capital improvements plan to move forward with those. The current interest rates are very good to be issuing bonds in the market right now. We're in a current interest rate market of a fixed rate, approximately 3% or less for 20 years. So uh, it's a good time to take care of some of the things that the city has on its plate to, to finance in the future. If y'all have any questions, please, I'm here available to answer anything. You are there any questions? Just a comment. You yes, know, we are, we are in a position now that, that it's time to get a lot of things off our plate. So That's right. we need to move. Uh, Mr. McAdalty and his father before him have been in this business a long time. I knew his dad when he worked for the Montgomery County Schools and was a uh, budget director. And, for, for the Clarksville Montgomery County Schools, and now they're in another end of the financing, but uh, they are doing a lot of work for Robertson County as well, and your, right. your work is appreciated. Are there other comments on this matter? Thank you, Mayor. All right. Anything further? Call the roll, please. Snead? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Greg? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Charter? Aye. That's six zero. Six to zero. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you. Now, item 2.6 is resolution 1603 this authorizes the issuance sale and payment of not to exceed six million one hundred and fifty five thousand in aggregate principal amount of general ob obligation public improvement bonds for the city of springfield and provides for the levy of taxes for the payment of the debt service on the bonds this is just the financial support going for that is there a motion so moved second yeah. second any discussion Yes, Mayor. Go ahead, Mr. There, there's no itemized, uh, there's nothing here itemized showing how the $6.15 million will be appropriated. It's, it's got some verbiage, but there's no dollar All figures right. to, to each. We'll ask Mr. Mr. Mudding to address that. You go to the very back of the resolution. through it you've got a debt service schedule mm -hmm. and you have the uh, total issue sources and uses and you've got the uh, of course the cost of issuance and then if you scroll down further you got the detailed cost of issuance scroll down further we should have the amount on here We need to see that I, general I, I, breakdown. Yeah. I printed it off. I mean, this is what printed off. It didn't come out. Man. Well, let me see. Let me see if it's back on the other one. I have the information, Paul. Okay. Yeah. Lisa, will you summarize that for I us, will. please? Um, the different projects that are included in this bond issuance are the Bransford demolition for four hundred thousand um, dollars. Trail um, improvements at Travis Price Park for $170,000. Um, improvements to the baseball and softball fields at Travis Price Park for $35,000. Um, repairs to the concrete of the dugouts at Travis Price Park for $55,000. Um, a purchase of a fire engine at $485,000. Uh, concrete work at sta fire station number two for $40,000. So a million one hundred eighty-five thousand for improvements to the general fund is for um, 
up the Mount Denson, Denson pump station upgrade for the Logan Todd project is $2,850,000 and the easement acquisition for the water transmission line for the Todd project is $2 million. So $4,850,000 um, for, I guess, the sewer and water project. So almost $5 million of this is going for water and wastewater related issues and the balance, which is slightly over a million, goes for multiple uh, general fund projects. That's what Ms. I'm Ms. Ms. So, If I recall, this was broken down either November or December. Yeah, we've meeting. gone over it before. So it's we not like we were not informed. It wasn't showing on that. Yes, sir. Mr. Snead, okay. did you have another comment? All right. Well, they 400000 for the Bransford. That's just the demolition of the gym. There's nothing else. If there's any extra money, the it's not going to uh, uh, no okay all right any further discussion okay. please call the roll mayor Cornell aye Snyder aye Hubbard aye Charter aye Snead aye Greg aye past six zero all right we move now to the administrative portion of the agenda the first is a monthly uh, item that we discuss uh, when this is the adjustment of the wholesale uh, fuel, the cost of wholesale fuel cost adjustments in the TVA, and they are our supplier of electricity, and we have to listen to what they are going to do in the way of going up or going down slightly on our rates. I'm hearing from the electric department tonight. <laughs> Okay. All right. The rate is quoted then as between what? Give me the percentages again. I didn't bring that book to me, uh, but I think it should be attached to what you have. It's only five to three point five. I thought I had it, but it wasn't included. Well, actually, the federal, the February fuel cost adjustment is 12 percent lower than last month is attributable to uh, because the average temperatures were higher back in December. And uh, so they didn't didn't have to use as much to generate. Uh, and this is it, it's saying a savings is the way we're getting if, I, if I'm reading this, a decrease of about 2.6 percent. Is that how you read it, Paul? Savings of one dollar, one dollar ninety-five cents to three dollars and twenty-five cents on the average residential electric bills based on usage. Depending upon the category that they're in. Yeah. Okay. A decrease so that's, of that's two point six percent. Yeah. All right. It is a decrease this time. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. A second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Step. Snyder. Aye. Cornell. Aye. Greg. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Charter. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Past six zero. And similarly, the rate adjustment by the gas department. We're up uh, about 7.76%. However, the average rate of So you're telling the electric department that you're still more affordable, is that what you're telling them? Even though you're going up this month? Competition is a good thing. Right. All right. All right. Do I have a motion on that? And on that note, move for approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Charter? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Greg? Aye. Pass 6 zero. 3.3 is to discuss and possibly act on the acquisition of six easements for the relocation of water and sewer lines in conjunction with the construction of the Highway 41 South widening project. I'm sure we don't want to do anything to delay that. So oh, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments on this? Yes. Mr. Sneed? Um, Mr. Lee Masters, the um, I'm seeing an easement. There's six uh, six easements here. One's called Sneed General Partnership. 
Yes. I didn't know I owned any land out there. You but. don't. <laughs> that uh, that is Sneed General Partnership owned by Jackie Jacqueline Sneed and her family. Okay. David Thompson is that's not our chief, is it? That's him. Okay. I see the bank, uh, Farmers and Merchant Bank, is the biggest recipient. Uh, they're all in the same area, right there, aren't they? Or the the they... Sneed property is by Car Creek. It's on the west side of 431, down by Car Creek. Of course, David Thompson is up there in Moreland. Farmers Bank, Farmers and Merchants Bank, of course, y'all know where that is. So they're they're basically scattered up and down the lane from just about from Memorial Boulevard all the way down to almost uh, Batson Boulevard. So, so the the easements are going in and out we just needed these particular ones to make it a straight line there are several places where water lines or sewer lines are in or right now are, are in the right of way and they need to be moved out of the right of way do we need all of the forty two thousand dollars of the bank right away i mean do we have to acquire that much Can, is there any way to reduce that that's a sizable portion of right away it, it is i don't know exactly well, i can tell you exactly what the right of way is but but easements are determined based on the value of the land, not on any improvements. Some of these are commercial properties, and commercial properties tend to be more, have a higher market value than, than private properties or things like that. So, you know, when you're right there in the area of Farmers and Merchants Bank, that, that, that property has a pretty high value. Other questions? Please call. Mayor Cornell. Aye. Charter? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Greg? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Pass six zero. Three point four is to discuss and possibly act on the award of a TDEC grant for the acquisition of a new waste oil burning heater for the Public Works Department. Alan Ellis, that's in your uh, <coughs> department. You want to make a statement on that before we get a motion and so forth? Uh, this was a grant that came available last fall and we applied for it I think in October or September it's actually replacing some of the equipment we actually have now we do have a heater that burns oil and we do have a, a, a storage tank there that we can receive oil from uh, the public and we are certified uh, hazardous waste collection of oil there right. at our place but this is basically replacing equipment it's a hundred percent grant so there's no matching dollars and uh, it'll just upgrade our equipment that we have now. All right. Is there a motion? So okay. moved. I second. I'll let her have, have the motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Charter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Pass 6 0. 3.5 is. A revolving loan agreement in the amount of uh, nineteen point two hundred fifty nineteen million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. This is a report on debt obligations from a previously issued uh, uh, project. Paul, if you'll make that report. Yeah, Mayor. All we have to do is uh, note that this was in the record that this uh, form CT zero two five three, which this particular report pertains to the first uh, phase of the revolving loan that we took out uh, in October for $19,250,000. And uh, there's no action required by the board, but we do have to uh, make sure that the record states that you've been presented with this report. Okay, that's just a state requirement and acknowledgement, public acknowledgement. All right, 3.6 is to discuss and possibly act on the proposed contract with Clark and Associates Architects Incorporated for the preparation of contract specifications for the demolition of the Bradsford Community Center gym. Uh, who wishes to speak on this matter before we, do we have anybody? That well, I can it? speak on it. All but David will do that. Very familiar with it. Well, Mr. Clark has been uh, working with the Bradsford Community Center over the years to give them some estimates of probable cost and uh, repairs and uh, so we feel he's qualified to uh, take on this project this will be funded with the bonds that we are going to sell uh, probably in February and that were approved tonight okay. 
you just want to you, this is just to approve the contract it's to approve the detached contract all right motion on this matter please so moved and a second second any discussion now yes, on this contract yes sir i just want this to move ahead We're probably about 10 years behind okay all right Liner. mr sneed i see that the uh architects uh base fee is twenty five thousand for the demolition of the Brantford gym mm -hmm. and then anything in addition to overseeing that and, and including if he were to handle the contractor who actually does the work he's going to get 20 percent of anything that he handles on top of the invoices um, including landscaping and, and some other things listed is, is is that uh, normal that a 20 percent above the invoice if he calls somebody to landscape around it and it's ten thousand dollar bill we got to pay him two thousand just to make a phone call for well, just an example yeah look this is a standard contract aia contract uh the fact is this is going to be done in a matter of days we're not looking at something that's going to take months and months uh so if, if there's anything that he has to handle He's given us a uh, estimate of cost, reasonable cost, which is in the area of three hundred and sixty thousand. His fee is twenty-five thousand. We have fifteen thousand dollars above and beyond that. Uh, this this building should be down in about five or six days. Yeah. Yes. All right, other, what other questions? Well, the asbestos mediation, is that included in this original? Yes. No, okay. Anything further? Call the roll, please. Mayor Cornell? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Trotter? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? No. Pass 5-1. Okay. 3.7 is to discuss and possibly take action to assess liquidated damages <clears throat> against uh, in situ form technologies llc for work related to contract 2a in our sewer project mr lemasters do you want to make a statement on this thank you mayor this is a second contract that we had with in situ form technology they, they had done contract 1a on this particular contract, and, and similar to 1A, they, the contract time, it took them longer to finish the contract than the contract time allowed, and, and we, I chose, came to the board, chose to uh, recommend that we do not uh, assess liquidated damages. Basically, the contract that we sign, any contract that we sign, has a standard part in there about liquidated damages. As uh, generally, liquidated damages are assessed uh, based upon the harm or the damage that occurs to a contract if a contract is not completed on time. As a general rule, and rather than try to determine exactly what liquidated damages are specific to the, to the injury to the city, contracts have, have a general par paragraph that says we, the city and the contractor agree that uh, liquidated damage will be assessed in the amount of $1,000 per day for every day beyond the contract when the contract is not finished beyond the contract time. They signed the contract, we signed the contract, so everybody agreed to that. On this particular contract, uh, the, the contract <coughs> work was completed 49 days after the contract date itself, the final date in the contract itself. There were some extenuating circumstances. Uh, Six of those 49 days were due to Gresham Smith taking longer to review some documents than, than what the contract uh, document specified, so that drops it down to 43. Additionally, there was some additional contract work that was found during the final inspection where they had some more uh, sewer laterals to fix, so that added six days, so that brings it down to 37 days, so that would be $37,000 that I'm recommending to the board uh, assess liquidated damages. And Situ Forum is not unaware of this. In fact, they have been made aware of this at every progress meeting and every payment request for what they've submitted in. Uh, in the pay request letters that come from the, from the engineer to us and a copy goes to in Situ Forum, in every one of those letters, the engineer said 
here's the dollar amount that you're requesting that is a certain percentage of the contract here's the time that is elapsed and that's a certain percentage of the time contract and in every one of these letters there's a relatively small percentage of the, uh, the, the contract dollar amount is less than the time involved. In fact, if you look in, in the memo I gave you, uh, the first contract was, for, the first payment was 1.3% of the dollar, 25.4% of the time. And it kind of continues on down to payment number seven, 68.3% of the dollars were, were expended, but 101.3 uh, contract time. So the, at payment seven, they were beyond the contract time. Now they got some additional days, but it's still, at the final pay on payment 10, 78.5% of the contract dollar amount, but 104.4% of the day. So they were beyond the contract time. So what I'm recommending is that the board approve the issuance, um, the assessment of liquidated damage against in situ form technologies at the amount of $37,000. All right. Is there a motion? I move <coughs> approval. So second. second. You get a second. All right. Now, are there questions of Mr. Masters? Thank you, sir. We'll be on time. Please call. Are there any other questions or matters for discussion here? Call the roll, please, Tim. Snyder? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Greg? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Charter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Pass six zero. All right. 3.8 is to discuss and possibly take action on the nomination of Mr. Larry Simmons to represent wards three and four on the Board of Zoning Appeals. So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? Clear. Clear. Now pick the final gentleman. No, is this the attorney Larry Simmons? No. No, 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 no. It's Larry Simmons who works for Hollingsworth, I believe, uh, company. <coughs> Good system. All right. Please call the roll. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Charter? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Greg? Aye. Pass six zero. All right. 3.9 is to discuss and possibly act on the appointment of Mr. Bill Hargraves, who lives in Ward 6, uh, as the at large position on the Springfield Industrial Development Board, replacing uh, Mr. Bruce Gregory, who is no longer resident of Springfield. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor. Sir. With this and Sprint, the Industrial Development Board, uh, it's a pretty important board. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the, uh, regrettably, uh, I guess you heard the Schrader's getting ready to close. Mm -hmm. I contacted uh, the chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Blackwood, and uh, no, I wondered if they could do anything about that. Uh, the, since the, the Industrial Development Board has such a, a large role and, and influence in these matters, recruit, recruiting new industries, uh, what are the uh, qualifications of Mr. Hargraves? I don't believe I know him. Is it, what, is the board? Has lived, he's lived here for 26, 27 years. He is a CPA by profession, member of the community, uh, raised his kids here. Just want to make sure that the board is placed with a variety or well very, yeah, right. very his job involves has involved uh, working with a lot of large companies throughout okay. the country actually okay and besides that the board you referred to is the robertson county board that's right that's right this man is on the springfield industrial but has nothing to do with the county that's that's right yeah are we ready for a vote now? Anything further? He's a good Texan. Okay. That's why I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> I knew you were going to say well, something know, we about had to, it. We had, we had to come up here to kind of. Ms. Crockett didn't want him because he didn't go to, she's an A&M graduate. So, he, so she can. <laughs> A&M's all right. Now they're, they're fine people. Please call the roll. We need to have to get a little order over. I don't want these high school st uh, students back here in the back to see that some of these uh, leaders up here are having too good a time, looks like. Please call the roll, Stanton. Mayor Cornell. Aye. Charter. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Greg. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass six zero. Thank you. You've already said you don't have a representative on your of the beer board. 
Uh, no, sir. I, I, have, I have one person that was supposed to get to him. I sort of ran a lot of folks that says this would interfere with my Christian belief. But I try to get them to understand the responsibility of monitoring <coughs> alcohol and stuff, you know. So All right. I'll have someone, but I'll, if there's a meeting. That's I'll. fine. We move now to. Uh, uh, Mr. Nutting is going to explain <coughs> item 311. The no action will be needed on our part. <coughs> well, right, right now, the, the agreement was a reimbursement agreement, and uh, the way things stand, uh, we won't we won't need this the they've already been approved for a fast track uh, grant if um, if they decide to uh, go ahead with the project so uh, on the next item the GRW agreement would be to provide engineering service contingent on the company making an announcement so there's no need to take any action on 311 okay but there is on 312 there is all right this uh, work that is being referred to in the, under 312 is for engineering work that would be involved on the t the western end of our water district down uh, the far end of Cookertown near Pleasant View, which we've talked about from time to time, uh, where industrial prospects have, want to locate on the interstate, frequently want to locate in that area which puts additional pressure on our water system, which, and Mr. LeMaster will explain this. There is a large company is anticipating building a rather major distribution center. Uh, we, the area out there on Highway 49 uh, on York Road is one of three that's being considered. I don't know where the other two are, but it, it's kind of irrelevant specific to this site. Uh, and one of the issues that's always been a problem with putting something on this particular site is the water pressure that we have available. The water pressure is generated by York Road tank. And at this particular site, York Road tank is only about half a mile from where this site is. The most pressure we can generate is 65 pounds of pressure, and that's if the tank is completely full. Everybody who has tried to locate there, their insurance agency for fire flow say you got to have 80 to 85 pounds of pressure. We absolutely cannot do that. The most we can give them is 65. Well, I explained this to Mayor Child several years ago that whoever lands there is going to have to have a way to boost their fire flow to where they can get the pressure and volume they needed. Uh, in this particular instance, Again, we have 80, uh, 80, 85 pounds of pressure and a volume of 3,750 gallons per minute. Our tank out there is 500,000 gallons. Uh, we are concerned, and, and the company that we're that we're dealing with, the engineering company, they have proposed a, a dual feed fire suppression system. Their standby system is going to be a ground tank, kind of similar to our Mount Denson tank, on it's going to be around 300, 350,000 gallons. It will be powered by a diesel generated motor. Their prime, what, they, what they're proposing for the primary fire suppression system is to come off of our water distribution system. And we told them, as is, we can't let you do that because our 500,000 gallon tank could be drained in a hurry. But if you take 3,500 gallon, 33,750 gallon per minute, over a one hour time period would draw around 200,000 gallons. You know, based upon our other usage, if that were to occur when it was low, then it could drain the tank. So in conjunction with the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development and with the Industrial Development Board, they're gonna be putting money up to build, have us build a second storage tank out there on the site where this company is gonna put their distribution center. This tank will be will become the property of the city of Springfield. The agreement between us and the engineering company who's representing this major development is that we would have a contract with an engineering company. Uh, the money would come from Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development and the Industrial Development Board. The engineering company that we hire will be responsible for designing the tank, whatever, we don't know what size it is. We're, we're assuming maybe 500,000, like, like the same tank that's out there but we really don't know. They're gonna look at, at water use records for this entire York Road pressure zone, which is most of Cooper Town and, and other areas out there. 
how to determine what the average daily usage is, look at some other commercial properties that are out there and kind of estimate what that usage would be. Look at, we don't want a tank that's so big that the, that the water stays in there so long that uh, disinfection byproducts of generated or chlorine residual diminishes. So this engineering company, GRW, we, I'm recommending they be hired to do the engineering work. Now GRW is the company that designed the Tom Austin tank down on 431. This tank will probably be a tank on legs similar to the York Road tank. All right. Now, but all of this is tied with this project. That is correct. And we would be reimbursed for this, and you said the industrial board of the county, is that where I want to that clear, correct. clarify that, would be the one responsible for guaranteeing that this is paid. Well, this, this contract will be will be dependent upon the company choosing the Cooperstown area for their site. If they choose somewhere else, then we will have no need for this GRW contract. Okay. The funding will come from the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development as well as the County Industrial Board. Now, bear in mind that the, that the, the anticipated estimated cost for all this work is about a million nine hundred thousand. Just that's GRW's estimate based on a, I'll assume, 500,000 gallon tank. So the amount of money of 1.9 million is a couple hundred thousand more than the money available from the state as well as the county. So we may have to ante up a little bit of funds if we get this tank built. But wouldn't that be somewhat necessary anyway for the growth that we have in that area out there because all those uh, those homes that are there now and those that will come in in the future are all on our water system, correct? The Our water system basically ends there at the interstate. So, I mean, this company is, will anticipate hiring 600 people. So if you figure 600 people with all their families and stuff, it, it'll put an additional additional drain on that system as well as maybe on the other side of the interstate also. The water lines from basically from the middle of Cooperstown where the schools are out to uh, <coughs> Uh, where this is located. What size is that main line on four, along 49? There, the, the road, the, the York, Road, York Road pump station has a six inch line coming out of it. It goes down, uh, fourth, down Highway 49. When it gets to the school, the original line was a six inch line that went all the way around to the York Road tank. When the middle school was built seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, the county needed to have additional water for firefold purposes. So they proposed to build an eight inch line from the York Road tank to the middle school. And I requested that y'all appropriate another $75,000 to increase it from an eight inch to a 10 inch. So there's a 10 inch line going from the school down to the York Road tank. They parallel each other, one on either side of the road. And then the rest of the lines there are mainly six inch and under. Okay, all right, that's All right, we need a, so we will be what we're approving, uh, if 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 so approved, this uh, this action would hire this company to design the water tank that's necessary for this project to be a go, and that to is, provide construction and pro costs. And, yes, and we would be re reimbursed accordingly. The contract provides to support this yes. uh, this financial investment. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> but we don't have to do any work until contingent upon the company making an announcement. Right. So it'll remain, you know, inactive until All if right. and when that occurs. Well, these jobs are particularly crucial now with the uh, with the change in Schrader, which is now called Sensata, uh, with the with loss of those jobs. All right, thank you. Need a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Mr. Mayor. I yes, Ms. Snyder. I need to state for the record that I am on the Robertson County Industrial Board, and I also want to say uh, if this, if they choose Robertson County, this is going to be very good for our community, and it's going to be a uh, help our region. Well, we, that's, so, that's great. And they are, uh, will be a customer, obviously, of Springfield Utilities, which is good for us. Sure. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Snead. I would hope that uh, with the city's investment in this all the way out the, at the, at the edge of the county and on the interstate that that the uh, citizens of Springfield and, and Robinson County would have some priority and, and probably in the benefits that the Industrial Development Board may be giving to, to make this happen. I hope that uh, we can 
make sure that our citizens are given first uh, consideration in the hiring out there. As now, we've talked in the past about um, providing water for subdivisions that out in the county, and we don't receive any tax dollars from that. But the um, this factory is certainly welcomed. Um, it, what is the um, what is the uh, estimated pay an hour? For these jobs, I've not been part of this because this recruitment's been done for the county. Miss Snyder, so, have you do you know you was on the board? I think Margot probably can answer that question better than I can. Miss Fox, thank you, Roger. The uh, application that the company placed with the state economic development um, department, it is a distribution facility, but the wages were above average for that district for a distribution facility. So. They're better than average for what's already occurring in the region. That would be Amazon, Under Armour, Macy's, those those type of jobs. And there are significant um, supervisor and management jobs as well. All right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Ms. Foster, as Mr. Steve was asking the question about local <coughs> people being mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. the opportunity to be employed there, as a general rule, it's my understanding that we are somewhat strained at times to provide enough <laughs> people That's to fill right. these jobs. And because uh, I know Electrolux has people coming in from uh, Montgomery County, even from Davidson County, to fill those some of those 3,000 slots Sumner there. County. So mm -hmm. I don't think that'll be a problem then uh, in their finding in the people here who might want to work there. Right. Uh, being uh, And legally, in, in we are not able to tell require. a company who they can hire. We certainly encourage that and, and promote that as well. Um, if you're interested, I just came from a meeting at Schrader, and um, I can update you on what's going on there. We'd like to hear that one. Um, they are, um, of course, the news is, is not good that they, the, the parent company, Sensata, which bought Schrader about a year ago, uh, made the decision to, rather than expand this facility, which we had been in negotiations with the Springfield Industrial Development Board with management there about the possibility of expanding their facility to keep up with their production. Um, in this case, I think we're a victim of the success of that company. They decided that it would be cheaper for them to put that production in China and Mexico where they had excess capacity already. Um, that's a risk that happens when a company gets acquired by a large international corporate entity. Um, the good news for the Schrader employees is they do have a long lead time. Uh, the manager assured me today that they will be in full production all the way through at least the middle of 2017 and he said they could be still in production at the end of 2017. Full production. Full production. The they need to produce one million more tire pressure monitors in 2016 than they did last year. So nobody has to lose their job this year and really well into 2017. Um, they have a very uh, generous severance package that they have offered to their employees in order to encourage them to stay with them through the end of their production. Um, if they stay until they are dismissed, then they qualify for a very generous severance package. Um, we were also there today, <coughs> excuse me, with mem uh, representatives from the Department of Labor and from Workforce Essentials. Uh, they will probably qualify for something under a trade <coughs> petition where they'll get extra benefits on top of what they would normally get from the Department of Labor. That will mean um, extra training dollars, um, extra unemployment benefits beyond the 26 weeks um, and several other things. And one of the really, um, really encouraging things is that uh, under the Department of Labor, this trade petition, these employees can continue to work at Schrader and qualify for training so that they could go to school at night or online while they continue to work at Schrader in order to get a, a certification through a TCAT or a community college or even a bachelor's degree in some other area. So that's a very, um, that's very encouraging for those employees and the management said that a lot of the employees are very interested in taking advantage of that. So that's, that's that uh, you know, and, and, and the only other good thing I can say is that it's happening at a time when there are a lot of jobs, a lot of companies looking for employees um, and we don't have any other buildings to show. So when that building is vacated in two years, we will find somebody to put in there fairly quickly. 
Well, that, that's encouraging. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I have, I have two comments. Mm -hmm. First of all, I saw it have a protectionism type of complex about the city. I'm not going to give up the kitchen sink for no 10 and 11 and $12 an hour jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I was listening carefully to you about you know some of the some of the things that we have to watch out for. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it's paying some money, if it's paying some money, see, I was I was in on discussion when, when Fabco first came in, and they wanted to come in at seventeen dollars an hour. You see, but we want to dumb it down to to this ten and twelve dollars an hour. But let me put this out here: these people cannot function in this city on these 11 and 10 and 12 dollar an hour jobs when a shack costs about $700 to rent. So if we're going to go out on the limb, I want high paying jobs. And then another thing too, I'm part of the National League of Cities Community Action Development Board. We're having problems with these international companies coming into these cities, understand me, and just re really pushing us around. So. Yes, we're going to discuss that in March in D.C. We've got to be a little more protective about American workers because when an international conglomerate come in, okay, they open it up to an international type of employee. See, so we've got to be a little more protective about that. So, you know, my, my thought is this, and I'm going to shut up, Mr. Mayor. This is my baby that I raised my hand for about 25 years ago, and I'm going to fight for this city. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, Margo. Thank you, Roger. Now, where do we stand on this? We, we got a motion and a second to approve this contract with GRW for the engineering work necessary for this tank if it is a project that goes through. Mr. Riddle, did you have a question? I was just going to add, they've approached us about serving gas there. Yes. A pretty good size user. Yes. Uh, we worked with their engineers not only we're going to you know, water, but gas as well. Gas. All right. Hit that okay. Thank you for adding that. All right. Anything further? Call the roll. Mayor Cornell? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Trotter? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Past 6 zero. Okay. Uh, 313, uh, we need to talk about a time to uh, schedule a workshop where we talk about the uh, possibilities in regard to the expansion of our wastewater plant uh, being as late as this meeting uh, is this month because it's about as late as it could be time there's not I think we're going to really have to wait until about after the uh, February meeting I'm not going to be available the first part of February I know and uh, let's look at uh, Let's look at, let me ask you this, uh, would a noon meeting for say an hour to an hour and 15 minutes devoted strictly to that, do you think that would be reasonable? All right, for the explanation and so forth. Mr. Sneed. I'd like to see some representatives from TDAC who are looking for us to, for alternatives. Are they going to be, some representatives from TDAC maybe be there? Because we are talking about the alternatives, and uh, we, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Let me. Uh, no Tuesday. No Tuesday. Is that what you're saying? No. We're. Uh, I don't have a February calendar, but I believe, and I don't know what's happened to our little calendars that are usually up here. We'll have one here in just a moment. Our meeting in February, I believe, is the fifteenth. I'm suggesting a noon meeting. Okay, we're on the 15th, as, as I said. In March. No, no, in February is when our meeting is the 15th. It's 16th. 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 16th, excuse me. All right. After that, a noon meeting either the rest on, on a day that week or the following week is what I'm going to suggest. You, is there anything good or bad for anybody, anything bad for anybody on that, in that time frame? I prefer the 25th. You prefer what? The 25th. 
All right, that'd be Thursday, the 25th of February. All right, we're going to look for a, a meeting at noon on that day and figure on somewhere around an hour, hour and 15 minutes for that explanation. And we'll have a bite of lunch. You said that. So we said what day? On the 25th of February. That'll be after our regular February meeting. And the purpose of this meeting will be to fully discuss the possibilities on the wa uh, wastewater expansion. Now, the next item <clears throat> is the uh, is an item that Mr. Nutting and I have talked about a few times, and I've had a citizen or two talk about this: the railroad overpass on the CSX on Memorial Boulevard. Uh, as you know, railroads don't generally paint the outer portion of their bridges or overpasses. And there are a few instances where cities have planted welcome to their community and that type of thing on there with the cooperation from the railroad, but I think with the city paying for the thing. So we want to talk about some opportunities in that. Paul, do you want to talk about that just a little <clears throat> bit? Well, we need uh, to spruce it up. Yeah, <clears throat> there, there was a proposal by a citizen, uh, Scott Morton, came with some ideas about uh, Putting some historic representations uh, on the uh, on the railroad overpass uh, at the present time, according to CSX, that's not really going to be a possibility. But they are open to painting the overpass, and we don't have anything in the budget this year for it. But I am getting ready to present the fiscal year 2017 budget. So if the board is interested in pursuing that, I will uh, contact CSX and get approximate costs and get whatever permission we need to get from them. But uh, I don't want to move ahead with that if you're not interested. Uh, it is railroad property, but it is highly visible, and it is a detraction somewhat to mm -hmm. people who come through the community. Uh, but that's something the railroad will not do anything about. Nashville tried to require them to paint the Cumberland River Bridge there uh, back two or three years ago, and you can't require it, is the way I understand it. But it, if we could, I have seen some built, some overpasses that have been done in this manner. I've seen them in Henderson, Kentucky. I've seen them in Madisonville, Kentucky. So it can be done, and these were CSX lines. So, but. We need to do a little more research as to uh, how it was justified and who exactly paid for it and so forth. Mr. Sneed, you work for CSX. You've got to, you've got to. Yes, the, the problem with doing this is they got layers of lead paint on it. It's not just as simple as knocking some rust off mm -hmm. and throwing some uh, enamel-based, oil-based paint on it. You're going to have to wrap it up. It's going, it's not even, it, the expense of it is just probably not even going, it's going to be astronomical. Okay, well, astronomical. maybe we can't do it. But, uh, or maybe there could be something. What we were hoping, what Mr. Morton was proposing was some uh, it, really pictures, right. uh, inserts, inserts that would be put in a frame like on it to cover those, that rusted area up. Well, I'm, I know over at the, at the zoo on Nolesville Road, they've got the bridge painted with tigers and lions mm -hmm. like laying up in there. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some other bridges where they've put like picket fence and kids walking down the sidewalk and things like that and, mm -hmm. and I, I mentioned something to George James about painting the bridge over there on my side talked to think, them about it they said just give me a design but I mean that's painting some design yeah, the on one it. on Fifth Avenue would be a lot easier to paint but uh, it, it is uh, as you you know people coming into your city it, it, it does need sprucing up is there any objection to our pursuing just some research on that and then bringing something back to you no objection. on that? No objection. One thing, but what about the, uh, what about the uh, uh, pigeons? Well, that is a major problem, a major the one problem. on <clears throat> Memorial. Ask the fire department. They've had to go wash the yeah, poop up uh, many times yeah. in that, that <laughs> area. That sidewalk. Well, bad. as yeah. you know, for many decades, mm -hmm. there was a pigeon shoot <laughs> held every Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, yeah. we, we had a real problem with pigeons, and um, we took care of it other than using pellets. Um, so, I mean, if you're really going to deal with this, and it's not only at the underpass, although that is a very unsanitary location, sure. I fear that we're going to have several thousands of these birds back again if we don't take some sort of action. So, regardless of what the railroad's position is, we need to do something about the pigeons. Okay. All right. 
we're going to look in some of these things if there's no objection and bring you bring you something back all right now we're ready for mr lemasters you're on target for explaining item 35315 which is task order 14 from Gresham smith and then go on in, and we'll vote on that and then go on and do your monthly report Task Order 14 is forbidding and construction and administration of Contract 4. Uh, all the other contracts that had 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, Contract 4 is just one contract. There are five uh, sub-basins. 85% of the work is going to be in, done in sub-basin 8. Uh, sub-basin 6 is really small. It's the western part of Indian Hills. Sub-basin 1, CC, is over around Lawrence Lane in that area. Subbasin 8 is to the south of, it includes the way eastern part of, of Indian Hills as well as some part of, of uh, Fifth Avenue on down. And then 12 is further on out around Industrial Boulevard. So this this is, uh, we're planning on taking plans and specifications. Actually, we're going to bid those on uh, on uh, February 3, take bids on March 3. So this so is. So is this just authorizing the pursuit of this? Is that what you're asking? Yes, sir. We're, this is funding to actually bid the project and to administer it. All right. Their motion. So move. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> Mayor Cornell. Aye. Charter. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Greg. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass 6 zero. All right. And now to 316, which is the uh, report on the sewer rehab. Contract 2B is in its almost in its final stages. There will be a actually there will be a stop work order on 2B. It's anticipated. We've all talked about it. Basically involved in the paving. When it gets cold weather, you really can't do any paving. So anytime now we're anticipating the contractor requesting a stop work order, which will basically stop the contract but to the time on it. And then when when the weather is more favorable for paving, then we'll reactivate the contract 2B. But it's in its final stages. Uh, 3A and 3B, they're down in the, well, 3A is over in Bats, uh, South Mabel, and then Woodland, and 3B is on 16th and Clay, Park, uh, Meadow Point, and areas down in the south and east part of Springfield. Sounds mighty good. Thank you very much for that progress report. Now the consent agenda. Move for approval of the total agenda. Is there a second? Second. All right, call the roll on that matter. Charter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Cornell? Aye. Pass six zero. All right, Mr. Nutting. I have nothing to report, Mayor. All right, Thank is there anyone else who has yes, Mr. Trotter? No. Robinson County Schools are closed tomorrow. They are. Yeah. You over to Sun Holland? Do I hear something <laughs> from the back of the room? <laughs> no school tomorrow. <laughs> I want the, uh, modern technology they already the students from Springfield High School who are at the back of our room throughout the audience. We all stand for Call this. Call Adam for all services tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> We appreciate your presence, and I'll tell your your teacher uh, that uh, you all represented the high school well tonight. Thank you very much. Nothing else. We stand adjourned.